So let's have a look at this question and let's just read the whole thing. Sometimes where you need to start is all the way at the end or in the middle of the question. So let's take in the whole object, okay? It says given that the derivative of f of x is, and then they give you a function, given that the derivative of f of x is that, and f of 1 equals 1 and a half, find f of x. Okay, so you've got all of the pieces of the question sort of circulating around your head at the moment. Have you noticed that in calculus, we are taking all of the strands that you have built up over like the last 11 years. We're taking arithmetic and algebra. We're taking function notation. We're taking log laws and index laws. And we're jamming it all together. I've said this a few times before um, to my class last year, but calculus is kind of what most of K to 10 has somewhat been building towards, uh, which is disappointing because a lot of people don't end up doing calculus. And so they never find out. Like, it's like reading the first six books in Harry Potter and then just saying, ah, Deathly Hallows, don't worry about it. I don't have time for that. It's like, but, 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 we've been waiting six books for this. Please note how important all those foundation blocks are when you get to your AP3s, which will not be long, believe me. Um, often the errors that you make or the marks you lose are not on the new stuff you've learnt, they're on the old stuff. Okay? So, we have this f of x. The question is to find what f of x is. They give us some information that's sort of around f of x, which will enable us to get to there. The first piece of information they give you is a derivative, right? So they say that f dash is equal to, and then there's this object. Let's write that down. I think it's x squared plus x plus 1, is that right? Divided by x. Yep, f dash? Yep, so the derivative of f, so I'm using my notation here, right? The derivative of f, there it is, is this, okay? Now, think about this, and this is probably worth, oh, my colors. It's probably worth writing on the side just as a reminder for you, right? If you have f of x and you have f dash, right? The way to get back and forth between these is by two processes that we know. To get to f of x from f, what do you do? What's it called? It's called... It's early in the morning, isn't it? And we haven't had much sleep. It's called differentiation. We've made this point, it's not called deriving, even though you end up with a derivative. We differentiate to get from f to f dash. But to get back to f, like so, how do we do this? How do we reverse the process? What's it called? It's called integration, right? So when you have a look at what you have and what you need to get to, clearly that's why integration will be involved. They don't tell you, integrate, blah, 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 right? You have to work that out yourself through your knowledge of how f and f dash are related. Okay, good. Now, do you remember, um, I showed you an example like this, I think. Uh, this is something like what it was. Um, I can't remember the numbers. I feel like that was something else. I showed you an example like this and I said, hey, if you get asked to differentiate this, then, of course, if you had a death wish, you could do the quotient rule right away, because it is a quotient. But I encourage you not to do that. What did I encourage you to do first, instead? I encourage you to simplify. Why is that? Why not just go to the quotient rule? I, we know a quotient rule. Why not use it? Because we don't like it. Let's be more specific. Why do we dislike the quotient rule? It is long and messy and error prone. So simplifying first is a good habit to get into before you differentiate. The same is also true of integration, okay? If you look at an object and you think, I can simplify this first, then do that and that might make your integration easier. What might be an obvious thing to do in this case? Yeah, actually divide through. It's written as a quotient, as one single object, but I can write it as three separate ones. x squared divided by x is x, x divided by x is one, and then you just get one and x hanging on the end, which is why hopefully your brain is ticking over, why this question is in this exercise, yeah? Okay, so this is f dash, right? I've already established to get back to f, I'm gonna to have to integrate. So let's do that now. My next line is f of x. I'm integrating both sides, integral, of all of this stuff with respect to x. Is that okay? Now please note the way that I'm setting this out, okay? This is one continuous line of argument, one continuous line of logic, okay? Started with the derivative, 
rearrange the derivative, integrating the derivative to come back to the original function. This is f of x. You can help me out now. We've sort of done most of the, the logical legwork. Um, I just now have to integrate this thing, right? x is going to become half x squared or x squared on 2. Uh, what about the 1? It becomes just x. And then what about this guy? This is the thing we've been focusing on most recently. This is what turns into the log. Now, this is an indefinite integral, so I'm missing one more thing. I'm missing a constant. This is f of x. Now, at this point, you have found f of x, which was sort of the question. Okay? But I want you to look back at the question again. There's a piece of information they've given to us that we can use to go a little bit further. Okay? Um, we studied four years of drama. And in drama, we learned about this thing called Chekhov's gun. Chekhov was a, um, a Russian playwright. He said, if you've got a gun on the stage in act one, then it must fire by act three. You don't put things there by accident. And everything in a question in a textbook or an exam is like Chekhov's gun. What's the extra piece of information? The extra piece of information is this. Yeah? Do you see it there? I haven't touched it at all, right? So I'm suspicious that they put it there, and I'm like, I haven't used it. How will this be useful? f of 1 is 1 and a half. So there's a value, right, that comes from substituting in that value, 1, into all the spots where x is. So let's see what happens if I actually make use of this fact here. If I substitute in 1, I get, well, can you tell me what I get? I get a half out the front. I get 1. I get, I'm going to write log of 1. I'll just, I'll come to it in a second. Um, so I'll do the substitution. And then c is still hanging out over here because it is independent of x. So it's still c. Okay. Now, I can simplify some of this. Before I do that, I just want to note that I know what f of 1 is equal to, because they told me, right? So on the left-hand side, again, please note the line of logic and how clearly you can follow it. This I know to be 1 and a half because it's given, right? So now I can tidy all of this up on the right-hand side. That's 1 and a half. As Russell said, that's 0, yes? So 1 and a half plus c. So you can see, and this is quite a common thing, you want to be able to find not just that there is a constant, but what is that constant? If you get given sufficient information, then you can determine its value. In this case, c, of course, is just equal to just 0. So I'm ready to conclude now. Okay? I can say, therefore, f of x equals, and I have it here. But now I can actually tell you what c is. By the way, c is very frequently 0, but it obviously doesn't have to be 0. Like, if I change this to 2 or negative 1, or pi. Uh, this would end up being a different number over here, yeah? So I might get something else out. In this case, I just get x squared on 2 plus x plus log x, and I'm done. OK? So do you see what I mean? You possessed all the knowledge to do this before I showed you this example. Because what knowledge did you need? You needed to know that integration is the relationship between these. You needed to know how to integrate. Um, teeny bit of algebraic manipulation, and then some substitution. You have all that knowledge already, okay? But stringing it all together, you're like, wow, you had to pick up on all those things without anyone telling you part one, part two, part three. You had to make up the part one, part two, part three yourself, okay?